Hello, this is Professor Davis, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to this uh, lecture, Latin America, Colonial Period to the Wars for Independence, 1492 to 1825. And basically what I'm going to do is provide an overview of um, the history of Central and South America and the Caribbean uh, up until and through the Wars for Independence uh, from Spain. Um, Here we can see um, the um, conquistadors, the Spanish conquistadors on the left, and the Aztec warriors on the right. And we can see, uh, going back to our discussions of modernity, that um, the artist, the Aztec artist who painted this, really sees um, the Spanish as being um, the representatives of modernity. Uh, you can see they have, um, you know, what were at the time modern weapons, armor. And then on the right, you can see that the Aztecs um, are in more of a traditional type um, of surroundings. They're surrounded by nature. They themselves have taken on uh, the, um, you know, the costume of um, of uh, birds and other um, animals of prey that they would, you know, they would dress in in their fight against um, their enemies. Here we can see uh, a painting of uh, Christopher Columbus, who um, in 1492, uh, 1492 rather, voyaged to what was then known as the New World. Uh, historians really don't um, use the term New World without putting quotation marks around it because he didn't actually uh, found a new world. There were actually millions of uh, Native Americans living in uh, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, and also uh, parts of the, well, most of the American, um, what we call the United States today, um, North America. S uh, really, historians have, uh, over the past 20 years, uh, reconsidered the meaning of 1492 because um, for Americans, uh, Americans believe that. Um, North Americans, rather, people from the United States, believe that uh, his voyage actually signaled some great discovery, um, meaning that uh, once Columbus came to the quote-unquote New World, uh, that allowed for colonization of North America, and um, the British, the French, the Spanish, etc., came, and uh, they set up these free societies. You know, the British founded uh, the 13 colonies, then a constitution was written, and then it was really one, you know, success after another. So that today, um, you know, the United States is is uh, a world superpower. Um, so Americans tend to see their history as um, one of um, basically one success to another. Of course, we ignore slavery. We ignore um, sexism and things of that nature. Uh, women were left out of um, the Constitution and voting and things of that nature until the 20th century. Um, but Americans see their history in terms of, of glowing sort of positive things, whereas Latin Americans really believe that, um, or Latin American historians anyway, believe that Columbus's voyage really led to centuries of uh, oppression of uh, Native Americans. Why did the Spanish um, colonize the New World? Well, um, three basic reasons: gold, God, and commerce. Columbus, w you know, Columbus uh, sailed west because he believed that would be the quickest way to get to um, India and China, where um, it was believed that one could find gold and all kinds of riches, and uh, basically looking for a new spice trade route uh, to. Um, the East Indies. Um, uh, God, meaning that uh, the Spanish were going to spread, um, you know, Christianity and uh, Spanish culture 
and then commerce um, really opening up um, trade routes that um, would be able to compete with the overland routes from Europe to Asia. So instead of having to go around or overland that long route um, between Europe and Asia, one could go either s uh, south around um, uh, the tip of the southern tip of Africa, uh, or one could conceivably, in, in Columbus's eyes, sail west and uh, avoid that and get to uh, India must much uh, much faster. And um, finally, uh, one uh, has to acknowledge that the role of the Catholic Church was very powerful in uh, colonizing the New World. Um, one can see that uh, the Church was the largest slaveholder in uh, the colonies and remained so right through the 18th century. It set up a whole network of missions um, you know, r from, from what is today Chile in South America right up through what is now California, which was all Spanish territory. Uh, missions were um, places where uh, Spanish priests could uh, teach the natives uh, you know, how, to, how, to, how to read, read the Bible especially, and, and uh, would convert, then convert them to, uh, to Christianity. So um, the, th this is related to what I said in the previous slide, this idea that the conquistadors or the conquerors, as the Spanish were known, uh, would come to colonize the Caribbean and Central and South America for very base reasons. Um, they weren't there to liberate anyone, but really were there to um, exploit. So this, this history of exploitation is very, very powerful. And uh, next, um, the encomienda system was set up by the conquistadors, and it was a forced labor system. So uh, once the um, Spanish came, they immediately developed this um, very brutal way of um, really c um, getting natives to do work for them really for, for nothing. Um, so basically a conquistador, a conqueror, would be granted a certain amount of land from the crown in serv in f for their service. And that would mean that any of the Native Americans who lived within that area would essentially belong to that conquistador. And he could make them work on his, on his land, uh, um, growing crops, or uh, fixing roads, or doing building projects, things of that nature. So it was a very brutal system where the conquistador had, had total control over the land and the people who lived uh, on it. And what, uh, as a result of that, um, the slave trade after 1540 became um, a very important way for the Spanish to replenish um, the, lo the, the lack of labor, that the, or the loss of labor that became a real problem when the Spanish came because uh, not only were uh, Native Americans forced you know, to work in, in, in a very brutal encomienda um, system, but also disease. One thing that's very important to remember is the Spanish brought disease that um, you know killed killed millions. So by 1540, this is only 50 years after Columbus, um, roughly, uh, the Spanish have to um, export um, you know slaves from Africa, you know because Africans were immune to European diseases in a way that Native Americans were not. Okay, and that's something very, very important to remember, the, the role of disease in decimating Native American populations from New England all the way down through the Caribbean right into South America. Uh, because these Native Americans were closed off uh, for centuries from Europeans, they didn't have any immunity to diseases, influenza, smallpox, all of that. African slaves did, so uh, when they were brought to the New World, they didn't die off um, the way Native Americans were dying off. And on the right uh, is uh, Hernan Cortez, who um, was a very important Spanish conquistador who was responsible for the conquest of Mexico. 
and uh, the destruction of um, the Aztec uh, Empire. And here we can see um, really the, the cultural difference, uh, the differences between the Aztecs who were the occupants of, of Mexico before the Spanish conquest and Spanish Christians. Um, this is the kind of um, scene that uh, the Spanish found very revolting. Uh, we see here that um, at the top of this temple we see there's um, an Aztec priest dressed in white with a knife who's cutting the heart out of uh, a victim, most likely um, a slave or a prisoner of war, and you can see the person's heart is lifting out of his body toward the heavens, and the bird on the left is Huitzilopochtli, who was the Aztec sun god, and the belief was that if you did not feed the sun god, then um, the sun would refuse to shine, or would not shine, and the world would be plunged into darkness. And then uh, the Spanish, you know, saw these scenes and were sickened by them. But uh, the w once the Spanish tried to teach Christianity to the to the natives, they they, they were very um, confused because uh, part of Catholic ritual is the eating of the body of Christ in the Eucharist and the drinking of the blood of Christ, which for ca Catholics, once the priest uh, blesses the you know the the um, wafer or the, the wine that actually becomes the body and blood of Christ, and that is the the Aztecs believe that that was a type of cannibalism. So you can see the cultural conflict between the two. Now uh, the Spanish, when they came to um, settle uh, and to conquer uh, the quote unquote New World, they developed a very rigid um, social system. Uh, at the top were the Creoles and Peninsulares, and they were your white social, political, and economic elites. The Creoles were people of Spanish descent who were born in the colonies. The Peninsulares were people of Spanish descent who were born in Spain and who emigrated to the colonies. Uh, they were your social, political, and economic elites in the sense that they controlled the economic and political power of the colonies and would so right through the 20th century. Um, and uh, th they really become an important part of the leadership of uh, the revolt, uh, especially the Creoles, um, become leaders in the revolt against the Spanish. Next um, were the Mestizos, were, who were people of Spanish and um, Native American descent. And the Mestizos made up a large part of the population and continue to do so in many places in Latin America today. Uh, Mexico, as an example, is um, heavily Mestizo. Mulattoes are people of mixed um, Spanish and African descent. Then you had your Native American populations uh, who were called Indians by the Spanish. And then at the bottom, slaves, who were not considered um, to be people uh, before the law, but property. So those were really your, your different um, levels of elites. So unlike in the United States or in the American colonies where slaves were forbidden by law to marry, or people of color were forbidden to marry um, whites, in um, the, uh, the Spanish colonies you had um, uh, a great deal of race mixing. And this is going to um, cause some confusion later because when you allow different races to, to marry legally, then this social ri rigid social system begins to break down and that happens late in um, the Spanish uh, regime.